Hi, I'm Ify Hughes and I play a B in Silver Point. B is, I think she's quite mysterious. She's incredibly kind. Brave. B is cool. I think B is very strong-willed. But she's a good daughter. I need some help getting all the rafting stuff down to the lake. Could go on pretty late. Be a big help. B is Steph and Daniel's daughter. She's grown up around this camp. Um, she knows it inside out. For me, B is quite is the most familiar to me, being an, being being Irish and being that Irish teenager. She's very kind of athletic um, and obviously her parents run the actual camp so you know she's very involved um, and I think she's just she's she's a very kind character you know um, trying to look after everyone. First few days are tough but it gets better. I think it's very easy for Steph and Daniel to just be used to having her around. They expect quite a lot of her help. and for her to help with everything. Yeah. <laughs> B, can we start paying attention? Okay, Mum. She's a really friendly, familiar face to a lot of the younger kids. She just sort of takes them all under her wing. And I think also probably being an only child, it's like a sort of extended family for her. And quite often it's the same people that come back. So she's developed friendships that have family, gone over yeah. the years. So she's got her own little network now. Yeah. We're suddenly realising that she's growing up, she's pulling away. <laughs> We're not kids anymore. It may mean breaking some rules. Steph is far more give her freedom, and Daniel's like, no, don't give her too Keep much. Her Keep her here, don't let her grow up. I... You went out past the fence last night. You made me a promise, B. For her to, you know, just be overwhelmed by all these people from the city coming in and trying to understand what the life is outside of the camp, you know, I thought that was really cool to explore as that character. She meets Louis, Kaz, Meg and Glenn as they're like newcomers to the camp and she really wants to be friends with them. What about you and um, Louis getting cosy in the cabin? Hello, hello. Me and Louis become really close friends um, and Louis trusts her throughout the series. Louis gradually becomes to like B. I don't know whether B reciprocates that as she's very still invested in Finn. <laughs> Aoife absolutely shone and it was brilliant to see how versatile she was. She does very little, she's very controlled in how she performs and yet she's instantly empathetic on screen. I love Aoife's costumes and she gets to do really cool stuff. So she gets a lot of action stuff. Out of the way. She shot loads of different shots in many different places. So we had drone shots, then there was ones by the river. Uh, I had to skid up and because the camera was so close, I was also scared. I think we ended up doing 11 takes of it, which is a lot. Um, I did fall off at one point. But I got back up. B is like the perfect girl. She's pretty, she's got a family, she's got somewhere to come to every summer, she's got a proper home to go to whenever she wants, she's got parents that are there for her all the time. But obviously, we know that B isn't perfect because she's got all her different struggles. B is like Katniss Everdeen. Stunt double. Yes. <laughs> See, they get it much more clear than we ever could. I bet she's our daughter. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. <laughs>
If I could play yeah. any other character in Silver Point, it would be Glenn. It would be Glenn. It would definitely be Glenn. Let's do this. The way Chris portrays him, he seems to have so, so much fun with it and so much energy with it. And I just think it'd be such a fun character to just delve into. There's something you have to see, like, really seriously, like, right now. He is very enthusiastic. Some may say he's lovable. And he he brings, like, a lot of the jokes and kind of lightens the mood a lot of the time. Group Dragonfly, who's up first? Yeah. A kid I know fell from something like this and hit the ground so hard he swallowed his own lips. Will you please stop talking? He's got some cracking lines. <laughs> I mean, he's, he's, uh, he's, he's hilarious. He's sort of the comedy, the comedy yeah. element. He's using comedy basically because he's either been, you know, left out of things or he, you know, he's, he's always the one not picked or whatever. And so he's able to use comedy as a weapon in order to make himself part of the group and mm -hmm. to actually rise amongst the group. I love his character, I think he's, yeah. and I think, um, I think Chris is fantastic playing. He's always wanting to prove himself and he is willing to do anything to achieve that, even if it's a bit stupid, like life-threatening. Sometimes you have to do the stupid things. This is something I've come to learn in life. He sees the, um, kind of the, the good in everyone, I think, and so the good in just every situation as well. You have got to try this. He's just always trying to lighten the mood, but then he does also have a side to him that's serious that sometimes does come out if it needs to. He's very sweet and seems to fall in love with things very easily, quite a few times. <laughs> She's like Katniss Everdeen's stunt double. I bet she arches. He comes here to have fun and make new friends, which he does, I think. And this thing that they find in the woods is like, it's really exciting for him. And he, I don't think he really takes in the risks. And you see that in the show. I don't think we're on campgrounds anymore. You two can swim? Yeah, but I was swimming at three months old, like a baby dolphin. You don't want to jump, you don't, and he's too scared, but he won't admit it. I'm going through, end of. Glenn. End of. Glenn is very similar to Krish. I mean, yeah. Krish is very similar to Glenn. <laughs> I have called him Krish in multiple scenes and not noticed. Yeah. You are your character. I feel like Krish is a lot like his character, so in a way... Krish we, literally is Glenn. Yeah, he is Glenn. <laughs> um, so I feel like we have our own wee Glenn as well. So originally my agent sent me through the, the tape for Elliot, um, who's obviously another character, and I did that and then I got a recall for him. Weird things supposedly happen in that part of the woods. What weird things? Unexplainable lights, sounds, I mean, that's the rumour anyway. Imagine if you were Elliot. <laughs> Oh, that would be very different. Weird things happen in that part of the woods. What kind of weird things? Unexplainable lights. Sounds. That's the rumour anyway. It was really weird because I went in and then I read for Glenn and Elliot on the chem read, like on the same day. And then I went home and then like a, like a week or two later I got cast as Elliot. And then like two days later they were like, oh no, you're Glenn now. I was like, okay. Yeah. Imagine a different Glenn. It would have been, a, I don't think it would have worked. You are Glenn. Really weird. Yeah. It would have been really weird. It would have been totally different. Yeah. I think that's a happy coincidence. Yeah. Happy to be here. Glenn's fashion sense is so much better than mine. Clearly. He, he rocks some yellow shorts, like, come on. He's got so many stunts. Yeah. They call him Tom Chris. They call me Tom Chris. Okay. Mission quite possible. It was the first, it was, <laughs> it was mission quite likely. Oh yeah, yeah. This is one small step for Glenn. One giant leap for Glenn Kind. He actually did it. You messed up on purpose so that you could what do, do you it mean? again. I've you never look, done that. Snake. We were behind on filming that day as well. No, we weren't. Yes, I just we first were. up, no, no, no. no. You, were, you were behind on filming and you were like, ah, oh, this is fun. You I'm weren't even there. You I weren't was there. there. No, 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 no. I filmed no, mine no. in like two takes. Okay, we're going to have an argument now. That wasn't funny. In any scene or situation, whether it's sad, um, scary, he always has something funny to say. Honestly, I'm sort of in shock at this whole situation. It's the energy, I think. And like, the Glenergy. The Glenergy. That's what it is. Yeah.
Um, my name is Maya Sebastian and I play Kaz. If I could play another character, probably play Kaz because she's cool. <laughs> <laughs> I like her vibe, she's a sick character. On the outside, she's like aggressive and like puts herself out there. I guess she kind of seems quite cold towards all the characters at the beginning. What are you doing out here? Just go back to playgroup. Are you running away? What's it to you? Oh, oh. Yeah, she is a rebel. She, can, um, she must be the rebel. Immediately you identify her as the I rebel. Think she ends up in your office quite early on, yeah. doesn't she? Yeah, in trouble. You may want to be someplace else, Kaz, but we like having you here. So you take away our phones? Which means there's nothing to distract you from forming new relationships. What's lovely is the story arcs that you end up finding out why she's the way she is. It's not, as with everyone, it's not just because she's a grumpy teenager. It's because there's been a lot of history in the past. My foster parents, they're probably on a beach somewhere. Like you said she doesn't trust people very often. You know, I think um, she finds it hard to open up to people. But then she definitely warms up yeah. to each and every one of them. Like she opens up. Yeah, she's movie. not quick to trust anyone. Nah, that's for and sure. she's definitely set in her ways. If she wants something, she'll try her hardest to get it. Everyone has a great character progression, and I think she is one that definitely is, is prominent in the show. Four kids disappeared in these woods 23 years ago, never to be seen again. I don't think Kaz trusts B quite a lot, um, so I think B just kind of brushes off that. Kaz doesn't particularly like her. What's with this? I got some numbers we can try. People that might help us. Oh, unbelievable! This is why you came back here. What's with this? I got some numbers we can try. People that might help us. You're unbelievable. This is why you came back here. So Kaz was also a tricky character to cast because she has this brittle shell, if you like. She can be quite aggressive, quite sharp. But crucially, underneath it, there is someone who's quite vulnerable. And Maya, I think, instinctively brought both those qualities to, to the mix right from the beginning. She was brilliant. Cut. Thank you. Cut there. <laughs> we're very different, but in ways we are similar. I think we're different because Kaz doesn't like to be paid attention to, whereas I do. Um, <laughs> but I think we're similar in the aspect where Kaz is she's quite sarcastic and she's like, kind of mean to the people she likes, and I think I do that as well. If you can't be nice, just say the opposite of what you actually think. Okay, uh, you're mature for your age, you're fun to be around, and your breath smells amazing. Her look was very specific because she had this T-shirt that was really key to the whole show and to her um, her character plot through the show. Take that off. I didn't mean I to. I don't care, it's not yours. You don't just take other people's things. So that T-shirt was what we built the whole look around and it's her Feral Flowers band logo T-shirt. So that was the key piece that everything then was hung off the back of. I think this hair suits Kaz so much. We tried curly, we tried blonder, we tried a sort of lilac, like a light purple. Sort of like a, like a pinky sort of colour and they decided it wasn't bold enough. So then we came to this colour and... And they loved the strong. I think it, because Kaz, honestly, I don't think she finds it easy to express herself, but she can express herself through her clothes and her hair and her makeup, and I think that's a really cool thing. She was completely natural in, in the kind of energy and, and what she brought to the role, so she felt very real. She was never forcing it one way or another. Her character is fantastic to be admired. A great example of somebody who isn't defined by their hearing loss and basically is able to just, you know, embrace it and join in and, uh, and almost have it as a, as a power in, in a way. Are you reading lips? I can understand you fine. Do you know, if you mouth olive juice, it looks like you're saying I love you. My mum used to do it when I was little. You still are little. A lot of the things she's done is fueled more by insecurity or problems with stuff at home. You just see a different side to her by the end. I think nobody is what they seem at the beginning. She's a very feisty character. Um, We're she talking knows about you. I yeah. agree. <laughs> <laughs> she knows what she wants. Um, she gets what she wants. Um, but I think she's secretly deep down, she's a very kind and caring person. She just doesn't show it. No. <laughs> no.
I'm Oliver Cunliffe and I play Louis. Louis is... I think Louis is a very mysterious character. I think Louis is a very kind of nerdy character. He's very determined. He's very driven. He's quite mysterious. Yeah, he's quite a mysterious character. He likes to take control of the situations that he's in, so whether it be controlled experiments or making sure everyone does something in a specific way. It has to be a controlled experiment. Trust me. It was funny because I said to the, the director, how can I convince you to let me play Louis? <laughs> 14 years old, I reckon it could pass. Yeah. But he was having none of it, so. I think that Ollie is like Louis. I think he's less awkward than Louis, but... Yeah. Still awkward though. Yeah, still awkward. 109 take three. So Louis was a very tricky character to cast. There's a lot of elements to him. Ollie was, I think, there's something that really grabbed us right from his first self-tape. You're not just looking into the past, you're looking through time. There's a real charisma that Ollie brings. I think he's quite electric on screen. He had that intelligence and that leadership quality that we needed Louis to have. But he was also very capable of bringing in levels of the anxiety underneath, the, the vulnerability, the sense that Louis often hiding things from the others. There's a lot going on that you only reveal gradually through the, the first four episodes and beyond. He's always been in a mission for wonder. Like, so he's constantly looking for something impossible, which is what you'll find in the TV show. Dragonfly. Dragonfly is the group that they put all the problem kids so they would help each other out sort of thing. And when it comes to like the relationships in that, Louis and Kaz, especially at the beginning, do not get along at all. We're supposed to look out for each other. I'm group leader, I have the spoon. They don't care. This is the loser group, that's why they put us all together. Ben always looks to Louis for like advice and answers. Yeah, Glenn stresses Louis out a lot. Ben, stop it! Final, think about it! Really? He wants to do quite a lot of the things that Louis has, he wants to do because it has to be very specific, has to be a controlled experiment, and has to be done in a, a very certain type of way. Okay, here we go. Three, two. I might need the toilet. You just want to have fun, yeah. and I just want to understand everything that's going on. But in the end, we work together. Exactly. And it, and it goes great. His whole sort of family background's interesting. I think for viewers, they'll find out lots of bits about him and you discover why he's the way he is and why he's come to this. It's not just for a very simple reason. He's not just come to an adventure camp. Deep down, he's quite sensitive and shy. He's really interested in this rock and astronomy and everything. He's got this almost trauma that has come from the passing of his dad. That his dad passed early and he never really handled it well. My dad was a huge nerd into astrophysics and stuff like that. He was like obsessed with it. I used to hang out in his office and he tell me things like, there are more stars in the universe than words ever spoken by every human that's ever lived. Is that true? At the start, um, me and Louis become really close friends um, and Louis trusts her and shows her this rock. But I think throughout, this, throughout the series, Louis gradually becomes to like B. Um, and I don't know whether B reciprocates that, but um, as she's very still invested in Finn. Um, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> if you look at the overall story of Silver Point, his dream comes through, almost. He's fascinated by, by a certain subject and then all of a sudden he finds proof of that subject and is able to share it with four friends and do extraordinary things that no other kid in the world has had the opportunity to do. He has a great character development. Mm. As it goes on, he gets very different. Every episode, you see a new side to Louis. And then by the end, you have a very different impression from the first episode.
Hi, I'm Katie Brown, um, and I play Meg in Silver Point. Meg is very quiet. Meg is very sweet. She's quite like shy and reserved. She's like the baby of the group. Quiet summer and the outdoors could be exactly what Meg needs. Why did you get dumped potato anyway? Don't you have adorable parents? I thought it'd be good for me. I think she's a sweetheart and she's been so sheltered by her parents and she doesn't want to be treated like a baby anymore. She wants to have like cool friends and have little girly chats and like that's why she looks up to Kaz. You coming or not? I think she's a very good friend, but at first, like, her shyness comes across a lot, so you have to really, like, do some digging to get to know her. No, 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 don't, don't, no, 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 no. <laughs> Me and my sister play a lot. I mean, we used to, before she moved out. Kaz doesn't really do friendships, but when she's found Meg, she's like, okay, I found my first real friend, and so that their relationship kind of grows, which is really nice. You don't have to do this. Yes, she does. Don't let them think you're weak. She's quite hesitant to do any of the any of the stuff because obviously she's not comfortable doing it. She's not a very talkative or social person, um, but I think when she wants to be, she can you know put her point across. I can't stay in here. I have to go. Wait, this again? I'm going out there. You can help me or not. Meg, growth. This during during the series is fantastic, like and it, and you know there's there's quite a few kids out there who would be find themselves quite insular and quite introverted. It takes something like this, and it takes something like throwing yourself into the deep end of something that you're not quite comfortable with, in order to find what it is that basically makes you blossom. I'd say I'm quite similar, actually. You know, um, I'm not like a very loud person, and also you know Meg's quite clumsy, which. Is I'm also quite clumsy. The key thing with Meg was finding the vulnerability and she's a character that, that the audience really need to connect with right from the beginning. She's the first character we, we see on screen. So capturing that, that vulnerability and actually often with very little dialogue, often it's, it's in the looks and finding that sophistication in a young performer was, was a really tricky ask. Um, Katie brought that absolutely in stage, she was brilliant. So I did um, a couple self-tapes, um, and then I got called up for London to London to do kind of like an in-person audition, but also like a chemistry read with Maya. Wearing my T-shirt. Oh, sorry. I, I, I spilled some... Yeah, take it off now. Oh, it's on the floor. I don't care. It's not yours, don't just take people's things. Sorry week later or something, um, we got the email that obviously I got the part and stuff. So. Take that off! Now! I didn't mean I to. I don't care, it's not yours. You don't just take other people's things. I know. Sorry, I shouldn't have done that. Katie and Maya on camera were very, very good at playing that tentative warmth, that sense of not quite trusting each other, but just beginning to, to find a relationship. And then as soon as the cameras turned off, they were laughing and giggling. They got on incredibly well, and that chemistry, I think, really helped. You just can kind of tell, I guess. I guess with us, we kind of just bonded. We just bonded. <laughs> oh, great. Uh-oh. You left me. What's lovely in her sort of journey is she starts out as someone who's quite insular and she kind of grows and actually she becomes a massive sort of vessel for what needs to happen. So with that, this kind of confidence comes through her and she forms great relationships with some of the others. The lovely thing is they all sort of start apart and by the end, they're yeah. all really tight because they've experienced this massive thing together. She becomes central to, uh, yeah. like Claire says, what's going on and rises through the group as the assertive one.
My name's Scarlett Rayner and I play Alice. Alice is a fun-loving city girl. She just wants to party all the time. Alice's character, I'd say, friendly. Friendly? Yeah. That's a good one. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I feel bad now. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, you're friendly. You're very friendly. Especially in later scenes with um, Meg. I think that um, really nicely like highlights yeah. like, how friendly yeah, you Yeah, Alice be. has a sort of side sometimes. Yeah. This summer needs to be momentous. Raise your hand if you agree. What are you two gossiping about? I think, like, beneath her very confident, outgoing exterior, she's a little bit insecure, and that starts to shine um, with Finn. Any way I'm going to survive this conversation? Nope. Wow. I really like the indoor set. I think it's because I've never been on one before. So I was that like, was this cool. is so cool because they've like built it and it's inside. Let's have some fun! <laughs> Filming at night, honestly amazing. Only done it once so far. I want to do it again. There's just like a new vibe when it's at night. Like yeah. everyone, everyone's weird side comes out. What is going on? This is freaking me out, Finn. Oh. Hello. The challenges for me um, coming out here would mainly be just like being away from home for a long time. Yeah. But apart from that, I mean, I like living with everyone, getting yeah. on with all the casts and going on very well. We, we started to get on really well for, like, from the get-go, you know, but... Um, yeah, just having each other as friends and being able to see each other on and off set, you know, it's it's a, it's a cool it's a cool feeling. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> it's exciting to see, you know, where it's all gonna go. <laughs> Filming's been incredible. Um, I've loved all of it. My name is Liam McMahon, and I play Daniel. What's the number one rule? No wandering off tabloids. Which means you stay this side of the fence. Daniel is the uh, creator of the adventure camp, along with Steph, his wife. It's about eight years or so that he's been running this every summer, inviting kids from all over. Daniel is the counsellor of the camp, so he's the one who all the kids tend to go to with their problems. You may want to be someplace else, Kaz, but we like having you here. So you take away our phones? Which means there's nothing to distract you from forming new relationships. Yeah, I think there's a reason why Daniel is intrigued by, by the thought processes of a kid and about what makes them tick uh, due to his own childhood. Well, it's not easy for you to talk about it. That's fine. How about if you draw it? Hmm? As for me, whether I'm similar to Daniel, I'm quite affable, I think. I think kids like me, from what I know. <laughs> I'm right at home here. Um, the set and everything that's built is very, uh, it's right out of my childhood, because we used to go up our fields and forests and build huts, manufacture stuff like this. We never had it as professional looking as cool <laughs> as this, but yeah, they were makeshift huts and stuff. So we, we basically lived this out in our imaginations when we were younger. TikTok. He's a big kid at heart. It's the same reason I became an actor, really. It's to basically relive your childhood over and over and over. I mean, I was looking forward to climbing trees and rescuing squirrels, and <laughs> that was written out of the script, I think.
Hi, okay. uh, my name is Jordan Nadine and I play Finn. Hey, watch it! Respect your elders! <laughs> if I could sum up Finn in one word, I'll say confident. He's a good leader, yes. very assertive, yes, yes. very bold. It may mean breaking some rules, is what she's saying. If I had to play someone else in Seven Point, I think I'd have to go for Finn because it would be, it'd be kind of cool to be that kind of like heartbreaker, like everyone kind of like wants to be with Finn. Finn's the cool guy. I think that'd be a cool one to play. I think Elliot finds Finn condescending for the most part, but I reckon by the end of the show, he treats him maybe like more of a big brother, a protector. Don't listen to him, okay? He grabs the first nerd from New Arrivals and tells him about his weird theories. He's a ladies man, he does enjoy the attention from the girls. He definitely backs himself a lot. He's funny, he's cheeky, he likes to just have fun really. That's basically what his um, vibe is. Let's have some fun! For me, my favourite set and my favourite scene to film was the archery, which is just down there. It's not, it's not, there's not like much to it, but it was just like a really, I thought the scenery that day was amazing. Yeah, it was very scenic. Yeah, I loved shooting that scene. Yeah. I'm a favorite scene. Wow. There's a lot of similarities between me and Finn. Not too many. I'm not as confusing to girls as Finn is. Finn is definitely a character who wants to make the most out of any situation he's in. I'm similar to him in that aspect, you know, whatever I'm doing, I always want to make the most out of it and have as much fun as I can. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe I did that. <laughs>